Hi, I'm Anthony Ward and welcome to this tutorial for 3D World magazine. What we're going to focus on this time round is building this little guy who you can see here. Now, rather than just build a high resolution version of him and render him out, this time we're going to do two steps. We will be building a high resolution version of him, but then we're going to take that and convert it into a game model. So this will then be suitable to go into an Xbox, PlayStation 3, or any sort of console or handheld device. Now, as you can imagine, this is going to this could potentially be quite a long and in-depth tutorial. So what I'm rather than just record hours upon hours upon hours of video, what I'm going to do is at the beginning of each video in this series, I'll give an overview of what we're going to do and the main areas we're going to focus on. And then I'll probably time lapse a lot of the modeling um, and a lot of the longer procedures like the model optimization, UVing, and the initial building of a lot of the models. Now you can then slow that down uh, to look at it a bit more in depth. Or you and I will obviously slow it down when I'm covering key points. Uh, and you can also refer to the text in the magazine if you need to. Uh, so that's enough of an introduction. Like I say, we're going to create this little ninja guy here. He's quite stylized, but we need a starting point. Uh, and with, with any model, you need a starting point. And what we're going to do is we're just going to flesh out a, a base mesh. Now this will just be his body, um, which we can then use that. And then we'll dress it, and give him his clothing and add his hair, weapons and other things. So for this, I'm going to use Never Center Silo. If you've seen my tutorials before, you'll know that this is a favorite application of mine. I always tend to use it for my modeling. Um, it's subdivision surfaces, so you can follow these procedures in any other application. So I will bring up Silo. And what I'm going to do is just start off with a cube. And this is going to be his head. I'm going to subdivide it twice, and as you can see, that gives us a sphere, but it's totally made up of quads. So we will refine that, which bakes in that subdivision, giving us that extra geometry. So I can smooth it again, and we will smooth shade it. As you can see, we've got a smooth head shape. What I'll do is I will just move the concept over to one side so I can look at that while I'm modeling. Now his head is more of an oval type shape like so. And what we're going to do for the rest of his body is basically this. Select, extrude, pull out. In fact for that we may scale it in a bit just to give him a thinner neck. Another extrude out like so and I'll just delete those bottom faces and then we can just select those and smooth to round off that area there. Again we'll just go in extrude and then from here we can start to build the rest of his body just by extruding and adjusting that base geometry. Now as I said in the introduction. This will be one of those points where I'm just going to taper off and we'll go into time lapse mode so we can speed up the whole modeling process. But it's just the same procedure, extruding elements and adjusting the shapes to get the, uh, the base mesh and the base body of our character.
there we have this really basic base mesh. As you can see, it didn't take long to make. And what we can do now is we can continue on with this and refine the shape, uh, adjust the hands a bit more and the overall body. Just make sure you're comparing the proportions against the concept image or whatever image you're working from if you're doing a different sort of character. Just to make sure the basic proportions are correct. Now what I would do now is I would save this out like that and then go away for half an hour and then come back to it because what you may notice is there may be something wrong with the topology or the hands may not look right but you need to take a break and we need to vary those finger lengths actually see just having a break from one area and coming back to another and you can notice stuff straight away now I'm not going to linger too much on this base model and that is because we're basically going to cover it all up we're going to build the clothing and his hair and his eyes and all sorts of other bits and bobs so his body will eventually be uh, covered up and we won't be able to see it so you have to weigh up what you need to spend time on and what you can get away with just doing quickly so in this instance we've got this base mesh we can save that out we can tweak it later if we're going to see more of the body or we can save it for another project. Um, so I'm going to leave this video here. What we'll do in the next video is we will start to look at building in his clothing. Uh, this may be slightly different because I may do a bit more work on it between now and then. Like I say, I'm going to leave it for a bit and come back and do a few more tweaks. So we've blocked out the foundations of our character. We've built the basic body, the basic framework, which we're then going to build on top of uh, to add more details and to make it look more like the guy in the concept. And as you can see, I've added in a few more details here and there. You don't need to go that far because a lot of this is going to be covered up. So it's entirely up to you how far you take this. I've done a little bit more on this model just because then I can put it to one side and I can use it on a future project if I need to. And it's had that little bit of extra work done on it. And you never know, while we're working, we might decide that maybe his top or whatever he's wearing may come around here rather than be a sleeve, in which case it shows his shoulder off a bit more. And we've already built this little bit of detail in here, just highlighting these muscles. So it's, it's to, completely up to you how far you take this. So next, we're going to concentrate on his clothing. Let's bring back the concept. So as we can see, we have a bandana around his face, covering up his nose and his mouth, uh, a belt, straps on his arms, some sort of cape. Uh, there's not lots of detail in this concept, but that's the idea really. I didn't want to nail down the design uh, completely. I wanted something to give us a starting point. And then as we're building, we can change things. If, for example, is looking too symmetrical. Uh, he's got straps on this arm here and on here we may decide get rid of the straps on this arm uh, just to give it less make it look less mirrored and a lot more interesting as a basic rule you should try not to keep to make your character concepts completely symmetrical it's too boring um, it's, and it's not very interesting to look at and what you want is a more interesting silhouette so if you imagine this guy had a bright light behind him and he was just black, he'd have quite an interesting silhouette because he has all these going on. He has this bit of armour just on one shoulder, the belt, and they help to break up the symmetry. So what we're going to do is we're just going to focus on blocking out the clothing. We're not going into super high detail at this point. We just want to get the shapes in place and just see how it all balances out. And like I say, then we can assess just uh, what needs changing, what needs tweaking, what works and what doesn't. Because at the end of the day, what works on a 2D image may not work on a 3D image. So that's enough waffling. Let's go in and start to build some of the clothing and the straps on his arms, his bandana, his poncho, etc. And we'll just see how, he's, uh, how it's looking as we're going and change things if we feel like they need it. Again, like the first video, I'll start off 
by building some of the elements but then I'll slip into a time lapse just to speed up the video and just to give you a general over overview of what we're doing and how I'm approaching building some of these elements but uh, what I'm going to do I'm either going to use the base model we have duplicate the geometry and then work on top of that because that'll give us the main shapes to start off with or I'll start off with basic primitives but you'll see that as we're modeling so let's go in and start to build his bandana now we could select this and select these increase our selection duplicate that and we've pretty much got the bandana shape but if we look at the the edges and the edge flow we want the edges to go completely round like that horizontally now this is so that we can build in creases and just so we can add in a bit more detail and the actual flow of the cloth uh, actually flows a lot better so what we're going to do is we're just going to duplicate the top one like so and then we've got the starting point for our bandana we will scale that down and then we're just going to bring that down and scale it in again bring it down and scale it in now don't worry too much about geometry being underneath other geometry when we come to create the game model we'll get rid of all that for this version we don't really need to worry about it so there we're just scaling them out so it fits over his actual mouth and then this section needs to be raised because that's over his nose but what we can do is maybe just select everything else and then bring that down like that and then I'm just gonna scale the edges in and that will give us a nice lip on the top just smooth shade that and we'll hide the wireframe as you can see we're already starting to build up that bandana shape what we might do is we may refine the shape of the head slightly just pulling out these corner points because it's looking a bit square but we can tweak that as we go again bring this in slightly create another extrude bring it down and we want his neck to be a bit wider at the bottom and this is all we're doing just extrude tweak the shape we can slide those edges up if we want to bring them up a bit just to fit the shape a bit more and there we have the very basic bandana shape and then when we're happy with the shape we can go in and we can add in more edge loops and then we can start to break up the symmetry by adding in just a few little creases and folds just by pulling this geometry around like so just just playing around with it basically I mean that just looks like a lump but if I undo all that and undo that so the back needs to come down slightly as well because this is where the knot will be sort of around here but that's basically what we're going to do for the straps on the arms we'll probably duplicate this and then adjust it to fit and then duplicate that again and create the other straps the same for his boots we'll duplicate the bottom of the feet scale them out and then we'll add more details on top of it but like I said originally I'm going to now just slip into time lapse while I go through and block out all the rest of the elements and then we'll, I'll see you at the end of the video where I'll just do a brief overview and we can have a look at how the model's shaping up.
So we've started to build onto our base character and just build in some clothing. As you can see, I've just been using base uh, primitives to get me started, and I've also been using the base mesh as well, just to build on top of and duplicate areas. Uh, and sections like the feet, I del deleted the bottom bits from the mesh just so I could work, uh, just so I could uh, work on the boots a bit more freely and adjust the shape without the base mesh popping through. Uh, I'm going to continue on now. And basically just adding more detail here I need to add in the belt around here uh, some a glove sort of with some studs on here but again that will just be like these straps uh, across the knuckles here with some studs on this will have some depth and I'm just going to continue on but I'm not what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to go in and add in loads and loads of details this does need some more wrinkles and creases because it bunches up at the back but we'll add that in in the next video. Um, the same with uh, with this here, this poncho. We need a belt around his waist and one along his uh, across his shoulders here. Uh, and we're just going to experiment with some ideas and just play around with it and just build what we like into it, just to make him look more interesting. It doesn't matter if you veer off from the concept slightly, so long as you've got those key elements in there, which we have done. We've got his bandana, we're going to build in his armour here, which again, we'll start from a cube and just mould that into shape. To get the hard edges, we're just going to bevel them. So if, for example, we want to harden the edges of these straps, which we will do eventually, and we'll probably build in a, a few creases in them as well. But again, that's in a future video. All we're going to do is just press B. Well, in silo, press B. In whatever op application you're using, just bevel them and that will harden those edges for you. Now what that does, that means that rather than creasing them, which a lot of applications let you do, this will keep that hard edge information so that when we export this, which we're going to do to Maya, we don't have to worry about going back in, adding in more all the creases again, because it will already be built in to the geometry in the form of these bevels. So from here on, continue bot, uh, modeling, add in whatever details you like, um, play around with it and just have a bit of fun. You know, make him as, as interesting as you like and spend as long on him as you like. But just block in the clothing. We're not interested in adding in details yet. We just want the basic shapes in there, just so we can see how he's looking, get an idea for the flow of the geometry and uh, also trying to avoid symmetry like he has his straps on this arm, arm but I've avoided putting them on that arm if I hide his poncho you'll see he's sleeveless on this side but I've added a sleeve on this side here just to get away from that symmetry and obviously he'll have his armor on his shoulder here the idea is this hand will be holding his sword and this arm will be sort of his uh, his shield arm so he needs the armour on his or shoulder, he'll be holding a shield or something possibly in this hand here. So this arm needs to be, and this side of his body needs to be armoured up. But you get the general idea there. Um, like I say, just play around with this model a lot more, build in a lot more of the basic shapes, more armour onto his boots, um, maybe add sections into his poncho so there's more different layers. Um, and just, uh, just get to a point where you're happy to move on. And then in the next video, we'll start looking at just adding in a bit more detail. And maybe building in his hair. And uh, deciding on what we're going to do about his eyes as well. So, we've progressed since the last video. As you can see, I've started to work in a few more details. Now, these are all very simple, basic operations. Just adding in primitives to start you off and then reworking those into the shapes you want. The belt for example is just a cylinder just reworked to fit around his torso. The same with this belt in here just like we did with the straps. Just simple shapes wrapped around his body to give us these details which we want. 
The same with his poncho. I've just added a bit of depth to that. Just to thicken it up. And to make it more solid. And these are just cylinders. Tapered at the end. Just to give us those spikes. Same on his, uh, on his glove there. So where do we need to go next? Well, obviously, we need to start and think about his hair. If we look at the concept image, it looks almost as if something's landed on the back of his head and spread across the front with his hair hanging out in front of his face. Now, there's a couple of ways we can approach this. One way is to create a sphere, like so. Let's delete the bottom. Let's just scale that to fit on top of his head. Like this, we'll just smooth that a couple of times. Smooth shade, hide the wireframe. And then we need to rotate that, because the root for his hair, just like your hair, is on the back of his head and to one side, not actually on the top of his head. So again, we'll just scale that to fit. Like that. And then we'll just give it some depth. Just pull that down like so. Now there we have the starting blocks for one approach to creating his hair. And because this is the root here, we can pull that in. And we, if you notice, as I rotate around it, we've got these pinches here. And that is because we're using a, a sphere and we have triangles at this end here. And that's creating those pinches. But we can work that to our advantage by creating more cuts. Then we will just triangulate those. Like that. Ignore that for now. That's just the normals. Unify normals. There we go. Just flip that edge round. And then we can select every other one. Move those down. The same down here. Move those in. And what that gives us is this sort of effect, which will help enhance each strand of the hair. And once we've got that, we can then go in and say, right, let's start to build in these fancy pointy strands which come out the front of his head. Like so. Just extruding, scaling, and moving. Like that. So that's just one. And as you can see, you could then go in for each of these and pull out an extra section, pull out sections on top of sections. So pull out one of here and then build up that nice, flowy, floppy hair shape. Now, I'm not going to use this approach and that's because this is going to be a game model. And as such, we want to try and make life easier for ourselves later. And a shape like this with lots of elements pulled off, extruded, will not be fun to UV and certainly won't be fun to texture. And that's because the nature of its shape, you won't be able to get one nice uh, UV shell out of it without areas being pinched or without having to chop off an area like this so that we can unfold it properly, which then means we'll have problems trying to paint across this seam here and trying to get it to all line up. So thinking ahead, that approach will not work here, so we'll delete that. Instead, what we're going to do is take a simpler approach, which should, in theory, when we come to uh, do our uh, texturing and UVing, make life a lot easier. And that's to build, that's to approach it one strand at a time. Now it sounds like a lot of work, but it's not really, not compared to the sphere option. So we're just going to create one strand and just smooth that 
I'm going to rotate it 45 degrees and that just gives us the edges more of a like in more of a diamond shape fix the axis we can hide that now and then we just need to mold this so it fits around his head so extrude a couple of times out the front same at the back actually probably just one at the back and then we can scale that in and move it down to where the root of his hair is again just scaling and adjusting around his head we could switch to the side view if we wanted get a bit more precise scale the tip and that's going to come around here just fitting it around his head don't be afraid to put in some more edge loops if you want just give his hair a bit of a curl at the end so that's basically it just smooth the shade hide the wireframe nope hide the wireframe and what we've got there is just one strand of hair I mean at the moment it looks like some sort of slug that's crawling along the top of his head so we need to now adjust it to it so it looks a bit more stylized a bit more hair shape so first of all we'll just bevel the top slightly just to give it a little ridge across there then we'll hide unselected and just create a few more cuts along it I think I just accidentally nope select these and just pinch those in move them up slightly just to give us a bit more detail into this shape and there we've just well just done exactly that looks less slug like still looks a bit odd if we uh, bring back the rest of the model but what we can do now is we can take this model we will move the pivot point back to the root like so and that will mean that we can then duplicate and rotate that so if I open up the numerical editor duplicate that rotate it 180 degrees and then we can put that at the back of his head Again, duplicate another one, rotate it minus 90, so we get it at the side of his head, and then just rotate it so it fits something like that, and carry on. Then we duplicate it, uh, rotate it minus 22.5, and so on, and so on. And then when you've got one side of his hair done, duplicate and uh, mirror it across to create the other side. Now that will leave you with a hairstyle that's quite flat and uniform and boring. But what you should do then is just go on and when you've got all your individual strands, just go in and one at a time, adjust the shape to make it a little bit more interesting, a little bit more random and, uh, and wild. Now I'm not going to do that just now. I'll leave you to do that. Just duplicate those uh, separate strands until you've got a full head of hair. So what do we need to look at next? Well, we need to start thinking about adding in more details into the rest of the body. So as an example, the belt's looking quite flat at the moment. What we can do relatively quickly is just create a bevel in the middle, extrude that out, and then bevel those edges just to harden them. Again, like I said before, we could crease them, but then the creases won't follow us when we move into Maya. So I prefer to use bevels to harden edges that I need. Uh, open up our material editor, just apply that belt colour back to him. 
You can see I've been quite lazy and I haven't named my materials. Now, you should really name them, just in case somebody else comes along, edits the file, and uh, needs to have a look at them. And do, I mean, it's obvious which colour is which, but these two colours are quite similar, so you don't really know what's what. So I'll probably come back to this file and rename them all uh, before you start working with them. But, back on track, that's just added this extra ridge to the belt it's just a little bit more detail. You could go in and maybe add another one down the middle, which is inverted, so it cuts out of the model rather than uh, extrudes. And it's quick things like that which are just going to help improve the look of the model. The same with the boots. We could go in, just create a couple more edge, cut, uh, edge loops around here. Now this is just a quick example. You now just pull those up and forwards, and we've got creases on the front of his boots. Again, just adding a bit more detail, and we could copy those up to here and add creases around uh, the ankle joint here, where you'd naturally get creases in the leather. We could follow that up to his clothing here. We need some creases creating around here and around here, just to break up this flat element, this flat surface. So again, we could just, and you'll take more care over this than I am at the moment, but just add in a cut, pull the geometry around, and you've got a slight crease. Now again, it just breaks up that long flat surface. We could add more in under here and under here, and we certainly need to add in more on his bandana. Again, I'm just adding in lots more edge loops and then we can pull those around just taking a bit more care. And if we look at that, we've just added a quick crease in there which will come through in the normal map very nicely. And that's something you also need to consider. How much detail do I put in now compared with how much detail I can add into the normal map later? And by add in, what I mean is this model we have here will give us all these nice, this nice uh, soft surface detail, like the area here under his armpit. That will look nice in the normal map and it will soften the game model these creases here these will come through nicely in our main base normal map and that's all this will give us a base normal map what we can do then is work on top of it adding in more details and we could take it into an application like 3d coat and physically paint more normal map detail straight onto the model and that will allow us to go in and paint in finer creases and bits of detail which would we could do in this but it would take a long time and the topology would start to get messy and you'd end up with pinches and creases uh, which don't look natural and don't look very nice. So what I would suggest is just go through building all the main creases, the large areas like so and getting all your main details now before you're ready to move on. So what I'll do is I'm just going to quickly load in a model that I've worked a bit more on so you can see how the hair has worked out and some of the other areas that I've uh, added to. Right, here we, here we go. Here's where uh, the model is now. As you can see, the hair is looking much better. I've gone in and made it a bit more random, adjusted the strands. And even if we look from the top, I've given it a bit of a wave, and that was just by selecting the hair, select the vertices. If I just select it like so, just as an example. So select the vertices around the middle, which it won't let me do. Okay, well, you get the idea with that. Select the vertices around the middle and then just rotate them, which gives us this nice wave here. Again, 
it breaks up the hair and makes it like a little less flat and boring. I've added in some basic eyes. Now I wasn't sure how to approach the eyes but looking at the concept image it's quite a simple um, concept so I opted for simple eyes. These may change later, I'm not entirely sure but we'll see how the model pans out. Again I added in that ridge on the belt, we've built a basic buckle and I've added in some creases and again just some surface details like these laces which won't be actually won't be a physical model in the game model but they're there because we'll be able to use them in the form of the normal map when we come to project these down onto the base game model these de details will come through nicely onto the boots and again more main creases around his clothing and I've also built a knot, a basic knot at the back of his bandana. Now these, these are just here, I'll be perfectly honest, these are just there just to look nice for this tutorial. If this was going to be for a proper game model, these would be modelled flat so that they could be easily rigged and then they'd be animated either via dynamics in the game or uh, by an animator. And again, I've just gone in and added a lot more crease detail into the bandana. Again, just creating edge loops and adjusting the shape. And that's pretty much all this model has been up to now. Just tweaking edge loops, adjusting the shape and using basic geometry to get the shapes that we need. There's nothing overly complicated about it. It's not like uh, something we could approach in ZBrush where it's lots of painting and sculpting and adjusting and things like that. Just using subdivision surface model modeling techniques is ideal for a character like this. Quite stylized, quite simple and you don't end up with millions and millions of polygons to try and play around with. So I'm going to leave this model as it is now. I may work on him a little bit more. Like I say I'm not sure what I'm going to do about the eyes but uh, what we're going to do is in the next video we'll briefly look at where we move on from here and that's taking this model into Maya and starting to think about our game model. So let's say you're finished with your high resolution model. You've added in all the details that you need, you're quite happy with the way it's looking, the hair's fine, the creases in his bandana are fine. You're happy with everything and you're ready to move on. So what do we need to do? Well if we reduce this, this is our base mesh. At the moment we, we couldn't use this as a game model. We certainly couldn't project the normals from the high resolution version down to this one. Plus there's lots of intersecting geometry, there's models, there's polygons underneath elements and lots of things which we need to chop out which will never be seen and it all takes up precious processing power. What we can do though, this version we can save out as an OBJ ready to import into Maya which we can then apply a smooth operation to and then we can bake the normals from that down onto a game version which we need to create. But we don't need to start from scratch with the game version. We can use this model but what we'll do is we're just going to subdivide it once and then we'll just see how it's looking. Now those edges are nicely softened. They're not perfect but this is a much better starting point for our game model. These here we could maybe subdivide those another time just to round off those edges. So that's step one we've subdivided a couple of times now this here is quite angular but we could fix that in Maya so I'm not going to subdivide that again because it will subdivide the whole thing so we've subdivided the areas that we want now we need to strip out the areas that we don't want so straight away these laces we know that they're going to be projected onto the game model in the form of a normal map so we don't need the physical geometry in our game model. So we can get rid of those. These buckles, they're the same as this big one. So there's no point doing 
three times the work. We'll get rid of those. When we've finished with this, we'll just copy it and bring it down down here. The same with these studs. What I'll do is I'll delete these. This one is uh, orientated uh, vertically. They're all the same. So again, I'll keep one and delete the others. And we're just going round and assessing which areas to keep. Again, these studs are the same as that one, just squashed. So we don't need to duplicate the work. And these straps, we can get rid of most of these because they can be added on through the normal map. In fact, we can get rid of all of them. A bit of clever modeling, and these could be incorporated in, like I say, via the normal map. So again, we'll get rid of those. So that's the main areas which we don't need. And what we're gonna do now is just do subdivide, refine, control mesh. And what that will do is bake that subdivision into that model. And if we look now, you can see the wireframe because that topology is now baked in. We can't step down into a lower subdivision because this is the lowest subdivision. So from here, we now need to go in and optimize this a bit more. And what we're going to do is we're just gonna Let's hide everything and we'll start from the basics and work our way through it a step at a time. There's no point in trying to tackle this fully. So display hide unselected. So if we look at this, for example, we want to get rid of all the geometry that is inside the model. Now this could be quite an easy step to optimize because we use this to create our shirt originally. So we select that and break it off. And now with this hand here, it comes all the way inside here, so we don't need all of that. Let's maybe delete up to there. That's because I've got symmetry still on. Turn symmetry off delete that mesh inside there and as you can see there's no geometry inside and that's because what we ideally want is we want a seamless mesh no geometry inside because when you come to rigging you'll end up with polygons popping through and it'll just be an absolute pain to rig and then what we need to do is just line these up and then effectively combine it so if we combine those two objects, what we need, we can optimize these edges here because they're flat. And then we just want to merge those. Like that. For some reason the uh, the keys don't work when you have the window at this side. Not for merge anyway. I don't know if anybody else has had that problem. Press Control M and it doesn't seem to work. But you get the idea there. This is now seamless and it's all joined up. And we continue that around the arm so that it's just one solid mesh. And then we need to continue on optimizing it further. So when we approach optimization, we need to look for two things. Well, three things really. Firstly, what we've just done is making the model seamless and removing any internal polygons which are not seen and not used. We also want to get rid of areas where the geometry is flat. At the front here, it's flat. But the wrap at the back, we have a slight curve. But that's such a shallow curve, it doesn't add anything to the shape of the model. So we can go in and we can merge that, and it looks pretty much the same. Now down here where we added these bevels in, 
we have these three edges here and if we look from certain angles you can see that the bottom of there is flat so they're not adding anything we can delete those the same with this edge here but rather than delete that we'll just merge the ring above Now here we can see this is quite angular, this curve here, but we won't fix that now, we'll leave that now. All we want to do for this stage is go through and do a very quick optimization pass. Uh, you could do this in Maya, but I prefer to do it in Silo because I find it a lot easier to use. So again, we've got lots of edge loops here, we don't need all these, so let's just select every other one. Select the edge rings, modify, merge, and again, it looks pretty much the same. And this is all we're doing now, just going round. You could do it a lot quicker than I am. Like for the arm, for example, these elements here don't add much. Perhaps keep that middle one delete those outer ones and that's the beauty of this you can delete stuff and if you look at it and realize it's actually affected the shape more than you thought you can undo the shape of the arm if we wanted to go a bit more drastic we could collapse some of the edge rings so let's say go around select every other edge ring like so merge those and then follow that up and down the model and what we do in for areas like this we want the arm to stay round here so we don't want to collapse that edge so we just leave a triangle there which then goes into the arm shape and this goes all the way up and then again we can copy the, uh, that process with these moving up and down the arm just keeping the area of the sleeve round if we collapse these edges here it would look too angular so we can afford to keep those round and it's quite an open area of the model so that's what we're going to do just leave that round again going down to the, down to the uh, hands and again we can go in and optimize these strip these down on the knuckles there's too many edge loops in there so we can delete the middle ones of that of those even these fingernails which we added in we can probably go in and collapse those because that detail will come through in the normal map and there we'll just delete those edges to make those into quads and then if we look at that finger again this is where the knuckle is so we can probably get rid of that edge loop there that edge loop there this is the key part because when this bends you need to have the geometry in there to actually bend with it if we deleted that edge loop and that edge loop when this bent when this bent it would just collapse in on itself and there'd be no form you need those these extra edge loops here just to help keep the shape of the finger as it bends and again, if you uh, need less polygons in this final model, you could make the fingers like that. Sort of a pyramid shape, a, a diamond shape, by deleting those edges underneath and above. So th this edge here doesn't add much to the shape, if anything, so we can afford to delete that. And then because we've got this long polygon here, this looks like it's got uh, too much geometry in so we can go in again look at that does it add to the shape well it does on the thumb but it doesn't on the back of the hand so let's delete it from the back of the hand and then we can maybe be a bit creative and triangulate that like so and the same underneath maybe delete that there delete that there now as you can see this can turn into quite a long job 
but it's worth doing and you end up with a very nicely optimized game model. So there you can see we've started to reduce the arm and the hand and his shirt. So just going over that again, we want it to be seamless. So we're joining the arm to the sleeve here, keeping this area round because it's a key area and there's contrasting colors and we need to keep that shape there. The arm, however, we can afford to strip down every other edge loop, every other edge ring, sorry, and reduce the shape of the arm because a lot of that will be smoothed out with the normal map. We're then going in the rest of the model and reducing areas which aren't, let me just merge this, reducing areas where the geometry doesn't add to the shape or it doesn't help it to deform. This for example here, we can get rid of that. Let's just check from the side. Uh, well actually, that does add to the shape, but because this is a crease, we, we'll, we can probably get away with relying on the normal map to give us that crease detail there. And go around and I'll just merge those there and then select that edge ring and merge again. And it's all about just take a step back look at the model, see where you can reduce. And there's all this area under here which is far too compacted. This sleeve here, again just going in, chopping things out. This area here is actually underneath um, one of the straps. So we could delete that or we could delete the strap and then use the normal map to build to add the strap into here and while we're here we've got an edge there that's quite flat so we can get rid of that and we can get rid of that one because it's such a shallow angle you'll never see it and also keep zooming out from a game point of view just so you can see what polygons are actually needed mainly for the silhouette Again, that's not adding, so we can get rid of that. Maybe select that edge ring and merge it too. Now, I'm not going to go through and do the whole model while you're watching. Uh, it'll take quite a long time, and it'll probably take me a couple of days' work. But what we'll do is, in the next video, uh, when we'll move into actually move into Maya, you can have a good look at the model and just see where I've optimised, what I've done, and what I've stripped out. Let's just bring back the rest of the model before we end this video and just point out another few key points. So as an example, where this bandana joins onto the, the uh, poncho here, that will need welding in. So just deleting the geometry here. This is just a very quick example. So combine those objects, delete that geometry there symmetries on and then you can just bridge like so I mean obviously it's not going to work up to there but you get the idea and then that is seamless onto there and then as we're looking we can see that's quite an uh, that's quite a severe angle there so we need to leave that in the model but we can delete these other bits so we've just got those in there where these two meet obviously that needs to be joined seamlessly and again where that meets the shirt that needs to be joined seamlessly unless these are going to animate in game and need to flap around in which case then it needs to be separate so I'm going to leave this here and I'm going to let you just go in and strip this model right down until you've chopped out as much as you want. I mean, you'll get to a point where you don't feel like you can chop out any more. Again, this is just a first pass at the optimization. The next stage is to actually project a normal map onto a model and then you can tweak the shape and see where you can optimize it more, where the normal map will help you out so you can chop out those polygons 
and also where you need to add more geometry in because the normal map uh, fails in a word. So that's this stage done. Like I say, just go through as we have been doing, optimize these models down, try and make them as seamless as possible, reduce any unused or unseen geometry and uh, then export it as an OBJ and then in the next video we'll move into Maya where we start to actually get it even more game ready and uh, tweak the game model a lot more.